pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Thank you for braving the thunderstorms. Uh, in accordance with the requirements of open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenberg Public Access Channel. Tonight is a very special night. Paula Bertram is stepping down from the board after four terms, 12 years of service to the town of Lunenberg as a selectman. Paula was a, a town employee in the Board of Health for 19 years. She was elected selectman in 2006 and served a one-year term as a sewer commissioner before the town transitioned to the new board of sewer commissioners. She was the vice chair of the board of selectmen in 2008 and 2009, and she was the chair of the board of selectmen in 2010. She served on the bylaw review committee, the cable advisory committee, the public employee committee, and is the representative for subregion three of the Metropolitan Massachusetts Planning Organization, MRPC. Paul has done an immeasurable amount of work, especially finding state and federal money for large projects, including millions for road improvements. Paul is a personal friend, a good colleague, and we'll miss her on the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any comments from the board? I just want to thank you, Paula, for all the work you've done. You've been an inspiration in this. You're definitely leaving some big shoes to fill, so. Thank you. It's been a pleasure serving with you, and thanks for what you've done for the town. Thank you. And I will echo that with the, uh, uh, whatever Paula did was for uh, the betterment of Lunenburg. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> just a few words, too. On behalf of the town, we want to thank you for representing the citizens in, of Lunenburg for the tw last 12 years. Your thoughtful questions and researched ideas have been an attribute to this board. Personally, I'm grateful for the respectful discussions we have had on various topics and a shared goal of moving the town forward. Your breadth of experience will be missed as a member of the board, but hopefully you will share your passion going forward and volunteering about farming community and the recreational trails. Thank you. I'm going to take our 7 o'clock appointment out of order and ask uh, State Representative Stephen Hay to join us. I will have public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd first like to say that my colleague um, and fellow representative of the town of Lunenburg, uh, Representative Benson, could not be here tonight, but um, she does send her well wishes and regards and thanks for, for your service. I do have two citations, one from Senator Benson, and, uh, Representative Benson, and one from myself. And it says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its serious congratulations to Paula Bertram in rec recognition of your dedication and extraordinary commitment to public service. And Rep. Benson said, in recognition of your many outstanding years of service to the town of Lunenburg and its residents, given this 15th day of May, uh, signed by Robert DeLeo, Speaker of the House, offered by State Representative Jennifer Benson and State Representative Stephen Hay. I did receive one other phone call about a half hour ago. Uh, State Senator uh, Dean Tran was planning to be with us tonight, but he won't be able to. He asked me to read this and, and present it to Paula. 
Uh, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Paula Bertram, Board of Selectmen, in recognition of your many years of service as a member of the Board of Selectmen and your lifelong commitment to the town of Lunenburg. Be it further known that Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted to the Clerk of the Senate. Thank you very much. I'm going to take public comment, but... I, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you all very much. I just have a couple words. Um, I've learned a lot as a member of the board, and I truly value the opportunities that I've been exposed to. As a member of the Bylaw Review Committee years ago, I had an opportunity to understand the workings of many departments and boards. The extensive revisions of the board's policies and procedures has led to improved processes and a clearer expectation of how business should be conducted. As a member of the Sewer Commission, we were able to move forward the development of a comprehensive wastewater treatment plan that brought sewer to the areas in need but protected our rural character in other areas. Working on the Open Space Acquisition Team to obtain funding for the Lane property was truly a wonderful experience. There were so many positive and enthusiastic people involved, and I'm proud of our efforts as a community to preserve and enhance this valuable habitat. Prior to becoming a board member, I had the unique opportunity to work as an employee for the town, and I saw firsthand the incredible staff that the town of Lunenburg is so fortunate to have. Although a few have retired, a lot of the people that I worked with are still here, working hard on behalf of the citizens of Lunenburg, and I can't say enough about how dedicated these individuals truly are. Serving on the Monachusett Planning Organization has been a challenging and rewarding experience, and I'm proud of the role that I played in moving forward the Summer Street and Chase Road projects. I can't wait to see those roads under construction this season. Since Heather Lemieux became the town manager, I have been incredibly impressed with her ambition and drive, and I'm glad to see so many improvements take place in a relatively short time. The board, and the entire town for that matter, are lucky to have such a dedicated, talented individual working on their behalf. There are many discussions and decisions that will be happening in the near future. And I know that the town manager and this board will guide those discussions. And as a community, we will continue to work together and to thrive. It has truly been an honor to serve the town of Lunenburg. And I thank you all for the trust that you placed in me. As I leave this chapter of my life, I'm looking forward to having the time and the freedom to pursue my hobbies and interests, including drawing, woodworking, travel, and enjoying time with family and friends. It takes a group of very special people to give tirelessly of their time to enhance their community, and I'm privileged to have had the opportunity to work with each of you. The past 12 years have been happy years, and years that I will always remember fondly. Thank you all. <laughs> I know Mr. Alonzo is chopping at the bit. Is, <laughs> is there any public comment from the public? <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be here tonight for, for this reason, and I, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. So uh, maybe four or five days early, I'd like to welcome you to retirement, <laughs> which if my experience is any example, means you only get to go to half the meetings that you go to present. <laughs> um, Paula and I first met when she ran uh, her first year, and I remember meeting her right behind me in this building. She was seated behind those walls in the Board of Health, and I heard she was running and being uh, a member for one year. I was very interested in getting to know her and what her platform were and what she stood for and everything. There was a lot of turmoil back then in town. Uh, we won't dig up because it's all been settled. But it was a pleasure getting to know her. And I remember at the end of that campaign season, I, I wholeheartedly endorsed her 
and she won that election and served. Uh, we, she and I overlapped for, I guess, 10 years. I, no, 11, 11, 11 years. years. Uh, I've endorsed her every time since, and I've never regretted that decision. I found out early on that she's an incredibly hard worker. Uh, there is no research that's too far out of, out of reach for her to get to, and always, always well prepared. Uh, incredibly data driven. Anybody who's known her over the past 12 years knows that when you come, you better come with facts because she's going to have her set of facts that she has looked at and reviewed many, many times. Uh, being on the same side of an issue, she's been the absolute best, most fierce ally. And on those rare moments when we were not on the same side, she was a very formidable adversary. Again, everything was always professional, and yet you knew you had to come with your A game if you were going to be on the other side. <clears throat> because of her and her, what the chair said and what Ms. Bertram herself said, uh, her projects on the roads and conservation open spaces are really immeasurable to the town. They've brought such, uh, such an increase of use of town funds, of uh, donated funds, of grant funds. Uh, anybody who can work with MRPC, because it is a very, very slow and tedious process, it's a really testament to her, to her persistence. Uh, I will say that in her retirement, I think she'll get a chance to finish the book, which I kiddingly told her last week, I called Fifty Shades of Concerns. <laughs> we learned about all the kind of concerns that, that Mrs. Bertram has. There's the garden variety concerns. There were serious concerns. There were very serious concerns. There were alarming concerns and even sometimes grave concerns. That's a preview of the book for the other 45 you have to wait for it to be published. I was very proud to have worked on the board with you uh, for that many years and alongside of you. Uh, very proud to have been uh, an honor to be a colleague of yours and very proud to be also a friend. Uh, you should be proud of everything you've accomplished, and I wish you well in your retirement and all those hobbies and endeavors you're looking to, to uh, spend time with. Uh, I want to give you my heartfelt congratulations on a job well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Please. Hi, it's Katie Adams from Williams Drive, and I just wanted to also say congratulations. In this past year and a half, I have, I mean, I almost say full time engaged in learning town government, and everybody in their own way has been a mentor. But because of um, the way you research and do data, I, I think um, it's in line with the way I do things. Um, even if we haven't agreed, I was very, very thankful for um, our Wildwood Preservation Project because, in just a moment's notice, we took those similar skills and I would blink my eye and we needed a pamphlet and you had these amazing pamphlets and you'd blink your eye and we'd need a plan and we'd have a plan and um, so I'm sure that's what you've been doing for 12 years and I'm sure even in Hickory Hills hopefully we'll do things together but thank, thank you. you. Thank you Katie. Thank you. Hi I'm Mike Ray Jeffries of 1170 Massachusetts Avenue. So I know I had the opportunity last week to thank Paula, and I know I spoke with you personally as well. So again, thank you for the service to our community. Um, it certainly stands out. I think we're all aware of the countless hours you've put in to your job here. Uh, and I'm very thankful. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the second part of my comment is just to make the community at home aware that uh, this Saturday we have the election to fill the seat that you're going to have vacant and if there are any people at home that need rides uh, to get there uh, I and my campaign will be assisting whomever um, there's no litmus test we're not asking who anyone's voting for if there's anyone in the community that needs support uh, the way they can do that is to either call me at 978-582-4868 uh, or visit the website uh, microwayjeffries.com but again thank you Paula and uh, thank you as well Heather I think that what, what, what the Board of Selectmen is doing is so important to our community, and uh, I'm grateful for the service all of you offer to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, 
uh, Morgan Ledger, of uh, resident of Fitchburg, and also work for the Lindbergh Ledger, no relation. Um, I'll just make this very quick, because I've got, probably got a lot on the agenda here. 12 years is such an amazing, amazing term, especially for a run like that. And um, no matter wherever life takes you, I just want to wish you the best of luck in your endeavors, no matter what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Any business from the board that we missed? All righty. All right, our first, well, our second appointment at 7.05 is a toll booth request for the Wunenberg Skate Park, Inc. for June 2nd. And uh, I'll call up Mr. Uh, Griffin Cayozo. Hi. Hello. Would you tell us who you are, where you live, and what you're trying to do? I'm Griffin Cayozo. I live at 1091 Massachusetts Avenue. And we're trying to get a skate park uh, toll booth going in this little plaza over here for June 2nd. OK. I believe we have the application. <clears throat> Hours from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Police and DPW have been involved. Okay. And who will be in the roadway? Will it be everyone over 18? Uh, yeah, we have 12 people who have filled out the application and we have more coming. Okay. Make a motion we approve the request for the Lindbergh Skate Park to do a toll booth in the center of town June 2nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Se uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for, for sticking with this project. It's Your support. well underway. All righty. Um, I don't have any appointments, but I will use this opportunity to just mention once again vacancies on boards and commissions. We have two uh, on the Agricultural Commission. We have two vacancies as of June 30th. On the Architectural Preservation District Commission, we have one vacancy. On the Cultural Council, we have several vacancies as of June 30th, 2018. Public Access Cable Committee has two vacancies. The Personnel Board has one vacancy. And the Finance Committee has one vacancy as of June 30th, 2018. And again, if you're interested in any of those positions, <coughs> please get in touch with us here at Town Hall. There are talent bank forms here, and they're also available on the town's website. All righty. Town Manager Report. Just some quick updates, a short report tonight. We held a educational meeting on the health insurance changes that are due to take effect on July 1st as part of the new public employee committee agreement. And our account executive from Maya, as well as a representative from Blue Cross Blue Shield, were here to outline the changes to those who attended. And those uh, were also uh, provided in the form of handouts and um, and links to the information as far as the benefit changes. Some upcoming meetings, Town Council will be holding office hours on May 29th from 2 to 5.40. He'll be attending one a uh, commission meeting that night, so that's why it's 5.40 and not 6. And on June 26th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I have spoken with the finance chairman, Terry Birchfield, about scheduling a joint finance board of selectmen meeting to discuss the proposed long range staffing plan for the police and fire departments, as well as including um, the plan to move forward to a paramedic level service, a discussion about that. And the topic raised previously by selectman Luck about taxing to the maximum tax levy. The Finance Committee has a meeting this Thursday and will propose possible dates to schedule this joint meeting. The workshop for June will be a goal setting workshop and that date will be June 12th. And that is both for setting goals for the board and the town manager for the ensuing fiscal year. That's all I have tonight. Okay. Uh, our first current business item is the 
draft of the text title policy and I believe we have Karen and my lady. Yes. Yeah. Finance Director Karen Brochu and the Treasurer Collector Mylene Malari are here. <coughs> and this is, um, we discussed this briefly, didn't go into any detail at the last meeting. This is one of the goals for the year is to create a tax title policy and procedure. And there are some revisions which um, it's, you have a redlined version in your Google Drive and we can discuss any questions. This is something that um, Karen, Mylene and I have met on and uh, as far as process and what will work for that department for carrying it through. Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, on under um, the section that talks about payment plans, there's a section. It's the last sentence. It's on page three. It says, if the party that has the payment plan with the town defaults on the terms of the payment plan, the town will begin the foreclosure or tax lien sale process. I was just wondering if there's a timeline, or if it's immediate, or if there's a period of time. Is is it a default for more than two months? Is it a default for the payment plan agreement is really a monthly payment plan agreement. Okay. So when they fall out even a month, okay. we can right away, they are default. They are, um, they're gonna fall under uh, in, in compliance. Okay. I mean, non-compliance. Non and then we can, but we don't really normally just do that. We I guess that was my question because I think you try to attempt to work with the, with the property yes. owner and you try yes, to get them back on to the plan. So I guess my question is is you know that sentence indicates it, it's immediate, right. and and I don't know how the board feels about it, but typically we we try to go for consistency as a community. So I'm just wondering is there a period of time in which there are no more exceptions? And I don't know if that's something you want to consider putting in there. Um, because so I, I think it's open. Uh, I think that what what I think that there's always discretion with any policy that you've got here. The concern with, with putting yet one more restriction on it, there may be a time when you want to exercise the discretion because of extenuating circumstances. Um, I guess what I would think would be good is to try it out for a year and, and actually put it on next year's agenda to see what's going on with how it's been complied. Um, because uh, already by the time they've come up with a payment plan, uh, they have to do 25% of the amount owed and keep the current year's taxes. Right. So uh, I would just suggest then that maybe that word will should be may, because will implies that it will happen versus may begin the foreclosure. In my payment plan agreement, um, when it's signed between me and the taxpayer, uh -huh. we normally have a set time. Or where it depends on how much they owe, yeah, and how much year I think they can able to pay. Like the maximum by by the master of law is five year, so it it varies on a person and how much they owe and how much they can afford to pay mm -hmm. during this period. So each payment plan agreement they have one year, they have two years, they have three years, so at the most right. So right. normally. Um, Right now, most of our payment payment plan is a long time already, and um, I think the town will call. I just want to make sure the town is covered. That's why we put this when defaults because uh, some of those taxpayers are, are a repetitive tax agreement, mm -hmm. and I I've been there for many years being assistant and tax collector. Each, when every time they have a, a new tax collector, they do a payment agreement, they fall back. New tax collector comes in, they do a payment agreement, they fall back. Mm -hmm. So they are repetitive uh, tax agreement that doesn't really comply. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just want to give a leeway to the town that if they even fall, even for a month, that you the have town, that opportunity. Yeah, you have that exactly. option. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with the May, okay. though. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm comfortable with the May, will because I think it's really both good. directive to the treasurer collector 
but as well as to, to the candidate and saying we're going to do this you've already had these opportunities yes. now what happens if you go down further if it actually goes all the way to foreclosure mm -hmm. people have the ability to redeem the title mm -hmm. and they can get it back at that point mm -hmm. they pay additional fees so there is always an additional opportunity to do yes. something later mm -hmm. I, I think this is putting some uh, some teeth. structure and teeth into the process on both sides okay okay and they actually have a year after the initial foreclosure um, they have a year redemption period after that is filed with land yes after the final decree By law. from the land court um, uh, the taxpayer or whoever inherited the property has one year to file for a petition to the land court to redeem the property mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before the town can really actually do the auction or foreclosure process, I mean it, it's the foreclosure mm -hmm. stand, but the auction process. Okay. I had one other question that's really I think outside of the tax taking process, but I understood the about you know the opportunity to redeem the the title and and to to pay the back taxes and, and to, to stop the foreclosure process. And I know that as part of, of the regulation, um, once it goes into that foreclosure tax title process, all of the departments would be notified that this property, so that any permits wouldn't be issued and that, and that they would be aware of the status of the property. Um, but I guess my question is for the board, and I don't know whether or not there's a role, but at some point, would the process be that if it has gone to foreclosure prior to auction, would the open space committee or this board look at it in comparison with similar to the criteria that the open space committee developed to look at any properties that would be advantageous to the town? Or does that not occur? It, it's outside of this policy, I think, but I guess I'm just trying to understand the process. It's almost like we need a policy after with this one. Once a property has been foreclosed upon, and it's in the town's title before it is sold or disposed of mm -hmm. we want to have so it, the, review. The, the review process and how we want to determine whether there's a conservation public use or, planning or, or, other, or yeah. other things like that so it's almost like this is the whole thing is when you have success we're now going to ask you to have a, another success which is what's the policy <laughs> after it so uh, um uh, normally well in my pre previous predecessors, um, when because she is the only one f since I've been here many years, she is the only one who able to do the foreclosure, and I did see that um, when we received the final decree, even though it's not in the treasurer's manual to submit a copy to the board of to the board, she did uh, give uh, uh, you guys a copy that this property is foreclosed, so that just in case that so you know, the board or the town wants to do something about the property, they, they know that they have that option. And, and um, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I don't know whether there should be a policy in place to outline that process right. before it's auctioned off. Or it could be an amendment. It, it could, could be, be, an, amendment it could to be this added policy. to this. Yes. I think it could be added um, to the end. This. Yeah, yeah. The I, I end. think we have something here to... to um, to give a copy to the assessors, to, to give a copy in a file of decree to the assessors and to the accountant by the treasurer's manual, but we can just add a selectman to get a copy. I think that they should get a copy, but I think that there needs to be a, a small paragraph perhaps after that is, you know, open space review or something. But, but mm -hmm. you know, the criteria was developed by which and if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, but I think that they developed a list of criteria, and if at least three of those criteria were met, that that was deemed to be a, a desirable yeah. property. That was attached to write a first so refusal. Write a, so write a first refusal. So, but I'm thinking yeah. that we could right. do something Boards. similar to mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, but I think that has to be added yeah, to this, this so that what happens before it's auctioned off, they just want to yeah, put it back again. Maybe um, kind of prior to auctioning the property after the one-year petition of redemption, um, the ta ta treasurer collector will notify all the appropriate boards, including open space conservation. Um, yeah, board something, yeah, something similar to that. Right. But, yeah. but it goes beyond notification. I think part of it goes to... Um, I think there's a role for the selectman to coordinate uh, a response of whether that that property should be turned over to those other boards so that you actually should go to a town meeting vote say if it's going to be conservation the town exactly. should vote to take the foreclosed property and turn it to conservation so it might be to notify and then the, the selectman or the town manager will um, 
determine whether action should be taken based on feedback from the committees. Exactly. And I would make a motion with that change to this policy that we adopt this tax title policy. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So that helps that goal be accomplished. Yes. <laughs> yep. And thank you to Karen and Mylene. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Karen, don't go anywhere. I'm going to move up the uh, number six, the quarterly financial report, so you can get that. Before I even start, I want to personally thank Paula for being on the board and for being a fellow employee for a number of years and let you know that it was a pleasure working both with you and for you. <laughs> thank you, Karen. It's been a pleasure knowing you both as a friend and as an employee and as a, as a peer. So Thank you. You as well. Okay, this is um, the third quarter revenue and expenditure report kind of old news right now, but um, I will go through it. Uh, let's see. On the revenue side, as of 331.18, we had collected 30875237.66 in revenues, or 78.3% of our estimates. Um, of note in some of the categories are in local receipts, we had collected 81.98% of our local receipt estimate. There were several categories that as of that time period had, it, had exceeded estimates through March, and those categories include fines and forfeits, of which we had collected 104% of our estimate, or $869 more than what we had estimated. Departmental revenue schools, we've collected 143% of that estimate, or $30,369 $30, more 30, than what was originally estimated. Fees, we have collected 109%, or $12,133 higher than the original estimate. Penalties and interest, we've collected 104% of our estimate, or $7,475 higher than what was estimated. Um, and then motor vehicle excise, through March, we had collected just about 80% of our estimate. So that's um, all of the revenues, all of the local receipt revenues are looking really good, and that basically translates into our free cash at year end. Uh, taxes, we have collected 76% of our tax levy at this time, and state aid, we've collected 73% of our estimate. So all of our estimates, all of our revenue estimates are trending right where they should be or exceeding what we had estimated. On the expenditure side, we have expended 70% of the budget, $26,215,116. And of note on the expenditure side, um, our legal expense appropriation at the time that this report was generated was expended was just about fully expended, 99%. We did do a supplemental appropriation at the May 5th the annual town meeting, and so that appropriation is set to get us through June 30th. Snow removal at the time the report was printed had a, had a deficit of 102,000. That was increased, and we did do a supplemental appropriation to that budget as well. So that budget should be set with some small adjustments prior to the close of the fiscal year. Veterans benefits are actually trending lower than what the appropriation w is for 2018, and that's because we have less people who are benefit eligible than what we had anticipated. So we expect to close out approximately $50,000 in that appropriation. Our choice and charter assessments based upon estimates from DESE, though both of those lines will have a surplus. Um, choice will have a surplus at year end of roughly $65,000, and charter will have a surplus of roughly $203,000. And the reason for that is when the cherry sheets are put together, they're typically based on what happened the prior year. And as enrollments change throughout the year, they update those numbers. Last year, we were in an unfortunate position where we actually 
our, our assessments were higher than what we budgeted. So the school actually left a surplus in their line at year end to offset that deficit so that it didn't have a negative impact on our free cash when that was certified. But this year it's actually going to help our free cash. And then um, in health insurance, liability insurance, and workers' comp, there are some surpluses. There was, we had originally anticipated a surplus of 120,000 in our health insurance. That number has now dropped to about $70,000. And we did use $26,000 of the anticipated surplus in that line to offset some of the snow removal def deficit. Um, and then there is going to be a surplus in liability insurance of about $14,000 and workers' comp of about $16,000. And again, all of these surpluses will close at year end and become part of our free cash that's certified for June 30th of 2018. All other expenditures um, at the time that this report was done and even now should be fine to get us through year end and I even I anticipate that there'll be other closeouts that will help us with our free cash certification as well. So everything's looking real good for us this year. I think we would probably have a free cash that was equivalent to what we've seen last year. Great. 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 Good job. Any questions or comments? That's important to have that free cash as we're looking at next year's capital planning. Yes. Right, exactly. That's why we're conservative with our local receipt estimates. Mm -hmm. It helps. Thank you, Karen. Thank, Thank you. Karen. You're welcome. Yeah, Thank you. It. Thank you again, Paula. Thank you. Good Karen. luck with everything. Thank you. Okay. Next agenda item is to amend the Wicca license for hours on on the rocks. It's a note in your packet. Apparently that was a... The license on the rocks had the wrong hours of operations on it when it was changed over to the current license form it has now. So this is the corrected version as we originally adopted it. Right, and it's mm -hmm. uh, Monday, Wednesday, 8 to 12.45, Thursday to Saturday, 8 to 2. Sunday, 10 to 12.45. To two? Or Thursday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. I believe that's Do we have standard. other establishments that are open till yep. 2 yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think that's the standard if they don't have a. Okay. Mm -hmm. What, you're not up at that time? <laughs> not usually. I used to be. <laughs> I, yeah, I used to be. <laughs> Making a motion. Time. Uh, move that we uh, sign the corrected license. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All righty. Um, a vote to vote and sign a town manager contract. So at the uh, last meeting, we had an executive session following or reporting out on that. Uh, what we have done is negotiated with the town manager to provide for uh, what she currently has is a three-year contract, but we're aligning it with the fiscal year. So the three-year contract will begin July 1st, 2018 and end uh, June 30th, 2021. Uh, the salary has been set at $126,600. Uh, there, we've established that there'll be a review each year after April 15th and before the annual election by the board then in office, uh, they will, by July 1st of each year, set goals for the following year. And in November, uh, there will be a sort of mid-year, not a full review, but an update and an opportunity to change uh, the goals uh, that the town manager will be reviewed on. Um, and other than that, all the other uh, terms are the same as the existing contract and I would make a motion that we approve the contract second any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed all righty copy of that I want to thank the board and I look forward to the next uh, this next term of the agreement and the progress that we can make together Great. thank you 
I've got two copies of that. And I would just like to reiterate that at the end of a year and a half, but our first fiscal year, uh, we're very pleased with the town manager's performance and coordination with our goals and achieving most of them as we discussed at our last meeting. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, we have minutes from 410. And warrants. Okay, payroll in the amount of $783,000. $249.16. Uh, accounts payable in the amount of $556,708.20. And accounts payable in the amount of $1,285,346.68. Any action file issues? Committee reports. One last Summer Street report. <laughs> um, no, the NPO is meeting tomorrow, and it will be my last NPO meeting as a as a member of the um, board. And um, just to let you know that the board, um, Brad Harris will be reaching out to all the member communities in Subregion Three, and if anyone's interested in serving, there will be an election process, a special election to replace my seat. Um, so one other thing is something to keep in mind is the Board of Selectmen has the opportunity to appoint a member of the Massachusetts Joint Transportation Committee. Um, and right now we do have the Planning Board has a member, but the Board of Selectmen can also have a member. Um, so at some point, if you're interested, I would be happy to sit on that um, board. Um, unfortunately, it's not a voting board. It's just a recommendation, but at least I can keep you apprised of what's going on. We have talent bank applications. That I will <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would just report that uh, I believe that we will start seeing work on Summer Street, uh, the entire length from uh, Kings Corner to uh, John Fitch Highway. There's going to be work on that process to start soon. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just upcoming events. Again, the election is Saturday, May 19th at the Pasios. Uh, polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 p.m. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that Memorial Day, Monday, May 28th, the town has an observance at the Veterans Memorial Park across from the Senior Center uh, at 10 a.m. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment from the public? Any public comment from the board? Um, just in regards to the election, I would just point out that if people want to vote absentee, I believe they have to do that by Thursday. Um, so if you do want to vote absentee for the election, um, contact the town clerk during regular office hours and you can vote absentee if you're not going to be here this weekend. Okay. Paula, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.